I think drug policy will change in the direction you and I want it to change. Money speaks louder than morals in our world. Hello, my name is Clark French and I'm reporting for the Cannabis News Network and we are on our way to go and see Norman Baker. Now Norman Baker is the former Home Office Minister, he's a Liberal Democrat, former Home Office Minister for the Coalition Government and he was responsible for drugs. I don't think this country has been prepared to look at drugs on an evidence-based basis. All of us want to minimise the harm from drugs, we want to minimise the number of people taking drugs, but to assume that the rhetoric of the 1950s is appropriate in 2000 is not right when the evidence points in the opposite direction. I woke up and I had quite a bad neck ache, quite a bad migraine um, and honestly if it hadn't been for the fact that I've just medicated with cannabis I wouldn't have actually been able to be here or got dressed this morning. Um, so it's literally making the difference between me being able to go and do this interview with Norman Baker and not being able to do it. Norman Baker is the former Home Office Minister responsible for drugs. Um, so it's quite relevant to talk to him about medical cannabis because that's what his job used to be. Joining me now is Norman Baker, the Lib Dem MP. Why is it that you resigned? I actually wanted a break. Four and a half years in the ministerial office is quite a long time, longer than most people have as a matter of fact. And you've got Conservatives who want to stop you doing what you should be doing. That's quite a, an up, quite a challenge. 204, so we're here. 204 and a half. 204 and a half. <laughs> here we go. Past the tree. So I first met Norman when I was uh, trying to talk to some politicians about how medical cannabis helped me and I met you in your constituency office. Uh, I had been impressed by what uh, you put forward as a case for the use of medicinal cannabis. I thought it merited further consideration. Uh, that's why I thought it was right to bring in the civil servants, not just from my department, but also from the Department of Health, in order to hear what you had to say. Um, and I thought you and those who came with you made a, a pretty convincing case and uh, actually changed the views of the civil servants, who at that point, I think, had not heard the argument as fully as they ought to have done. If people approach policy based on prejudice, preconceived ideas and refuse to look at evidence, that is not a sensible way to form policy. The case for medicinal cannabis is very strong. Uh, I not only think it's wrong that people should be denied medicine that helps them, but I also think it's uh, appalling that they're then prosecuted for sourcing it themselves. I know that one very well. And it's horrible when your life is kind of caught up in the law when you really want your life to be focused on healing yourself and to be on your illness and to be focusing on getting well and getting better. So it can, it can be tough, it can be really tough. The fact of the matter is that what's illegal in this country is not illegal elsewhere. Uh, and what's illegal now in Britain would not have been illegal 50 years ago. And therefore, you know, there's not an absolute about the present law. The present law, in my view, is faulty and needs to be changed. And that's what I sought to try to do as drugs minister. The number of people who die from um, tobacco every year, it's uh, tens of thousands of people from tobacco every year, this legal drug we have. If you ask me people die of alcohol, I think the last figure I got was about 8,700 from memory. And I asked them who die from cannabis each year. And the figure is, uh, well, anyone know the figure? Yeah, that's zero. Actually, so I'm told it's one. <laughs> there was something that really struck me, which was what you were talking about with your report, where, um, where you did a report into drug policy. and. Um, how it just wasn't really listened to, how it really was stonewalled, I think was the term that you... There had been no independent review of drug policy in this country for 43 years, 1971 to 2014. And uh, clearly that was over, long overdue. And there was a great fear of politicians on both Tory and Labour sides to open what they saw to can of worms. Um, so they wouldn't do so. So frankly, it took a Lib Dem in government to do that. We had the International Comparative Study which uh, my party commissioned and which I forced publication of uh, against the wishes of my Conservative colleagues who would rather the thing were buried. Uh, the Tories were horrified. Every possible obstacle was put in the way of that to try and stop it <laughs> being completed or worked through. An International Comparative Study which we published today demonstrates 
that the approach which is taken in other countries can teach us about how we approach matters in this country. And our conclusions were that drug policy in this country is not working properly um, and that the method adopted by Portugal treating drug use as a health issue is more effective both at uh, helping people but also at driving down illegal use and driving down crime. So that's what the, that's what the facts show. Now, there are very in inconvenient facts for uh, the Conservatives and Labour who both want to have a sort of clamp down hardline policy. It doesn't work. So the report's there. Uh, it was widely welcomed by uh, people in the Commons. Of course the government uh, uh, tried to stonewall that as soon as I had gone. And of course Theresa May is not interested in that issue at all except to shut it down. But the fact is that report's been completed. It's there. It's a Home Office document. It's on the website and it can't be undone. What do you think would have happened if you hadn't stayed around? to make sure that report was seen through? Do you think what, oh, what it, would it, have it would have been buried in a deep level repository, about 200 feet underground, metaphorically. So it just wouldn't have seen the light? It wouldn't have got published. No. So I don't expect, frankly, any move on drug policy, except perhaps on alcohol, uh, between now and the next election. So what was it that eventually led you to leave government and...? You know, it's been quite difficult and unpleasant. I, the phrase I used at the time was walking through mud. That's how it was in the Home Office. But I think the public and the press are further ahead in this, in this um, consideration of drugs issues than some of the politicians are. And I think when I then came out and, and, and said what I did, I was more in line with what the public thought. I think drug policy will change in the direction you and I wanted to change. And the reason it will do so is very simple. It is that the American states individually are now legalizing cannabis either for medicinal or for recreational purposes. That is giving a financial incentive to an industry to generate money. And when the industry generates money for themselves and shareholders, they will then put pressure on the American government. And when the American government uh, caves into that, as they will do, then the domino effect will affect Britain and the rest of Europe. So we will get there, but we'll get there thanks to um, mercenary capitalists perhaps in the US. Money speaks louder than morals in our world. Your source of cannabis news. Cannabis News Network.